Yo, what's going on guys? Zach's here back with another video. Today we're going to be looking at how I do cinematics inside of Fortnite and in After Effects. If you guys haven't watched my pan crop tutorial, it'll teach you guys a lot of the fundamentals that we use in this video with our cinematics and flow. Be sure to go watch that. Let's get into it. <laughs> He's talking. We're in After Effects. I went ahead and edited two clips, actually one clip, but the other clip is for the transition in at the end. This is what I have for this tutorial. <laughs> We're gonna go on Fortnite, show you guys how I record these sins, and let's do it. Since I already recorded this, I'm not going to be re-recording the sins. I'm gonna follow along with this since my mic did not record inside of this recording, but we will go through this together. I will show you guys how I recorded the sins and what I did when I was on Fortnite. So I pretty much just went into Battle Lab, put on whatever loot you want. Make sure your time of day is on day so you don't get darkness and the nighttime, which is kind of ugly in sins, unless that's what you want. So in this, I just talk about what you need to find somewhere in the map where you want your background and player to me so like this behind this part of the map there's some cool stuff behind it so it would give it a good background and take the sky also into consideration not all the time you're gonna have the background in it you may be looking up you may be looking down it all depends on what you're doing in your cinematic so then i went into replay and then i found where i jumped off of course fortnite replay is just the greatest thing to ever exist right because he's dying in air like yeah i guess invisible barriers and stuff yeah <laughs> but yeah so we're just gonna work with this and what you can probably do to fix that have someone else eliminate eliminate you in Fortnite instead of jumping off, you know? Now I explained about ways to go into the sin. See how I'm going from bottom left up to the right? That's how you want to go. If you saw previously, while well, I showed you the preview, we envisioned the right left. I kind of envisioned which way I would go. I'd kind of just swipe right, go left, maybe right again, then middle, maybe left again. I don't know. You do so many patterns. I usually just go right, left, right, left, or right, left, middle, some. I just do whatever feels right, what looks good while I'm recording the sins, and whatever feels right with the music. That's what I try to emulate inside of Fortnite. I put all my settings to epic, applied that. So things in the air in Fortnite do not work well with autofocus. So I just manually went to where the subject would be and then just put whatever focus I thought was necessary at that point. So I think I got this first try. So I went from left to right. I'm still going up and see how I follow the skin down a tiny bit. Yeah, you want to try to emulate the movement a tiny bit when you're recording the sins. So that was a pretty good sin. That was on my first try, and I didn't even re-record that. Even if your sin isn't the best, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to fix everything with Pancrop. You can fix 9 out of 10 things with Pancrop. Moving on to the next sin, I just want to do a map sin because that's what I thought looked good. So what I did, I tried looking for somewhere nice and not just grassland and trees, you know? Misty is always good for sins. So I found this pink pig sign. I just didn't want to go re-record record another sin because sometimes you get lazy and sometimes you're hurrying through an edit and you just want to get sins done. That's where my specialty comes in, right? I just record map sins. I've gone away with it in so many of my edits. So I just found something to focus on, some like this that you can kind of focus on while you're moving the camera. If you guys didn't know, I'm just using a regular Xbox Series X controller because my other one broke. I've used that in a PS4 controller throughout my editing career, I guess. Let's see how I record this in. So from the last sin, we went from left to right, back to left. This one, we need to go from the right to the left and then from the left or focusing on this you can go any direction after you're focusing on this and the main part of the left swinging movement is done because in the first sin we're going left we need to keep going left so think of this this is the first sin right here we're moving cuts to the second sin you want to keep moving in a straight line that's how it's going to flow if you go like this and then backwards it's going to look like it just cuts out and like just doesn't flow nicely into the next sin just keep moving the same way as you ended it so that's what i just based my flow off of so one of my rules is just keep moving the way you ended off the clip before so this is how i record my second sin i started to the right moving to the left as you can see right there i kind of like stuttered a little bit but it doesn't matter because you're going to speed that up so much anyways you won't even notice it and in that part as well i think i changed speeds i changed speeds a lot in this like towards the end just like that i just changed speeds i just swing one way try to focus on something for a little bit make it really smooth with my controller you can go whichever way you want whichever way way you think sounds good with the music i'm pretty sure i use 100 millimeters for this camera angle inside of fortnite that was my second sin let's get on to the next one so the second part of the song i thought with a leg sin you know how it goes like boom do i've done so many of them in past edits so of course you can't have an axiom edit without the skin i chose a random spot nice looking spot while you're setting up your sin think about which
which way your camera is going to be facing, right? So in my case, my camera is going to be looking at all of this over here and it's going to see some of this in the background, probably not all of it, but this is a fine background for me. You could be looking that way, the other way, it doesn't matter. So what I just did, I just looked in a straight line and clicked auto run. So yeah, since we ended off the second sin swinging to the right, we're going to start this sin off from the left coming in to the subject. And on these sins, I try to get one, one leg lift like this per sync point. If there's two beats, then I try to get this leg lift and then this leg lift, right? All right. So see how I went from the left to the right to the subject and I wanted to focus on his legs. So we got a leg bend there, another leg bend there, another one there, and I just keep zooming in, okay? Because I just wanted the camera movement to keep going forward, because this is where I want to end the cinematic. I want to just go forward into the next clip. I don't want to go right, left, up, down. I'm just going straight forward. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how I edit these scenes and make them flow with pan crop inside of After Effects right now. Let's go. We are on After Effects. So we imported our sins, our first sin with the banana. So my process, I like to sync first, then pan crop second, transition the clips third starting with the first one drag it into your comp so the way I see this part of the song in my head is coming from this clip. I kind of envision which way I would go. I'd kind of just swipe right, go left, maybe right again, then middle, maybe left again. I don't know. So the way I'm going to edit this, I'm going to hit right bracket, bring it to the end because that's where I flashback record my sin at. So find where the sin ends. I'm back here. I went to the left, somewhere at the end there. I'm going to alt left bracket, cut it, right bracket, make it to the second B. And then I'm going to enable time remapping, control alt T, bring that up, put a keyframe at the end and then go to the first beat in the phrase and then drag it back to the beginning of your cinematic. So the beginning of my cinematic, I started somewhat at the tree and started going right. In the middle of our sin is the subject of what we want to look at inside the cinematic. Take these F9, go into graph editor right here, pull this one up, pull this one down. What I do, I put a keyframe in the middle, hit alt. So these handles stay linear with each other. And then I hit shift and pull these all the way out. So another time, so if we undo all that. So as you can see, when you just do it, it goes like this, hit alt, these stay linear, hit shift. So it keeps it straight and then drag them all the way out and then drag it a little bit down and then a little bit in towards the middle keyframe. We're going from the left to the right, back to the left. I want to put it on the inflection point where it's starting to curve that graph, the camera movement, where it's starting to curve the camera path. I don't know, that's just the way I've always done it. Then what I do with these, I kind of put them in a little bit because I don't like them that sharp. I kind of make it a little less steep and a little more out because if it just cuts right to the person, you sometimes barely know where it's coming from and you want the viewer to like visually see where the camera is moving. I kind of just put it like that so it flows into the guy more. I'm just going to tweak this a little bit to what I think looks good. I previewed a bunch of times and this is what i kind of ended up with so these points are all the way out these ones are kind of in more really down so you can see where the camera's moving for a couple frames before it gets to the subject and gets out of the subject this is what our first in looks like without pan crop very quick, very nice, flows quite well. Then we got two more sins to do and we're done. Let's put our second sin in here. This is a map sin. Again, right bracket, put it to the end. Move till you stop moving. Control Alt T, bring up timing map, put a keyframe to the beginning, go to the beat where it starts and then pull this back to where you start the sin. Alt left bracket, trim that. As you can see, the middle of our sin is the pig thing sign. Highlight these, F9, go to graph editor and do the same thing. Put this up, put this down. Try to make the subject in the middle. On these map sins, I sort of keep it going like it's, still on that little curve where it's like i'm really bad at explaining it but if you can see it's still rotating slowly what we're gonna do put a keyframe in the middle alt drag them both while hitting shift and then put these out maybe a little bit more like that and then this last one gonna make this around here i usually add like two frames of the of like non main frames i guess you can call them where they're just like frames that shows where the camera movement's going and that'll add a lot of motion blur which will flow even more into your next in and and act less like it's cutting. So I tweaked it a tiny bit. I ended up with this. This is what it looks like. No pan crop or anything. As you can see, it's going pretty fast for how slow we recorded it. It's going very fast because it's such a small time in the song. It's not even one second. As you can see, it's still rotating left. And then the last couple frames, let's see, one, two, three frames are going to the right. So with these sins, I'm just keeping the motion going as long as possible to emulate really nice camera movement. All right, put our last sin in, go to the end. I'm gonna go like probably the last frame where it's blurred. I'm gonna drag that to the end. Control T, keyframe at the end. Go to the first one, Alt left bracket, go to the first frame in the cinematic. And this is where I start moving. So this is one sin and two beats. 
I'll show a couple of examples of what kind of sin I'm trying to emulate here. I've done these a lot of times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm not even going to put a keyframe on this beat yet. Okay. So I'm going to go right here where it starts to focus and... He has his leg up. So he's got his leg up right here. You want the first 90 degree leg right after you come from whichever direction you ended the past sin in. So we got this left leg and then we want the right leg. So I have this right leg. I think it's way too close to the side to work with. And if I tried to work with it, I think I'd have a bunch of motion tile with it. So I'm actually just gonna take this one and this is back to back steps. So it might lag a little, but I'm gonna try it anyways and see if I can work with it. So I'm gonna drag that keyframe to the middle of these two beats. F nine easy is all of these put a keyframe in the middle of these two start here pull it up alt move this one shift out pull it up a tiny bit make this be you might have a lot more frames to work with here but i just have a couple because they're back-to-back -back steps this is what we're going with so i just keep going towards the end i wanted to zoom in a bunch because we're going into a clip so i'm gonna go something like that and it's gonna go really fast get some really nice impact into the next shot so i ended up tweaking this a bit this is what i think is the best for our starting flow part <laughs> I think this is the best remap for this sin. And you may think this is very linear, but trust me, when we get the pan crop on the clip, it's going to make it so much more smooth and like it's actually the camera movement that's being smooth. So this is my full cinematic sync without pan crop. As you can see, there's like nothing there. It's just sync, no smoothness at all. What we're gonna have to do, start pan cropping. So what I do before pan cropping, come down here and put motion blur on all of the sins and make sure it is enabled up here as well. Now we're gonna start pan cropping. Click on the first sin, S, R, P. That'll pull up position, scale, and rotation. Keyframe all of those in the middle. Go to your first keyframe. My other rule, left is negative rotation, right is positive rotation. And going left, you wanna go this way. And going right, you wanna go this way. Going up is this way, going down is this way. Pretty simple. The way I envisioned, I'm gonna go into the right. So I'm gonna start out from the left. Rotate to the left just a tad bit. And we're gonna have motion tile on this too. It'll cover all this black space over here. So as you can see, basic movement is going from there to there. We're gonna add black bars as well. So since it's moving to the right, I'm gonna rotate it to the right just a tiny bit, scale it in, and then put it wherever I think looks good. I think this would look good in the middle. And then we move back to the left. I always usually keep it moving straight in with scale. They will always usually keep going up unless Unless in the clip, I'm doing something that requires me to go backwards. I'm gonna keep zooming in and then go left around here. So starting off, starting off with position, click on position or click one of the keyframes, go in graph editor, and you'll see the position is very weird. That's just what position does. To fix it, you just have to separate dimensions and then F9 it. We have X position and Y position now. So now we can individually tweak these to our liking. Shift, drag these down um, here, come there. Now it's gonna look weird because your other attributes are linear, not graphed correctly. But once you get all of them, it turns out very nicely. So this is my scale graph. As you can see, it's just always going in because that's what the cinematic requires me to do. This is the way it looks. It looks like a time remap curve. And our last one is rotation, F9 all those. Or if you don't have an F9 key, I don't know why you wouldn't. Then you don't have a keyboard, but keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then put these somewhat like a U shape curve. So this is what it's gonna look like. As you can see, there's a lot of motion blur going in, and we're going to put on even more after. All right, second sin. Since we are going to the left, we come from the right. Same thing, SRP, position, scale, rotation, keyframe in the middle. Try to line it up with the uh, time remap keyframe so it's not offset in any way. So we're starting from the right, positive. I'm going to keep this somewhat at 100. It's coming from the right, and it's moving in, and it's going to go to the left, negative. Try to focus somewhere over here. So we're going to zoom in, rotate positively, and then go back to the right. Separate dimensions. Now, a trick you guys can do if you have flow script this is how i quickly do it to preset them so i don't have to move them as much so i don't keep these like the way they do i made these presets they're just simple so this graph is something like this so it's just exponential graph and this one is going to be something like this so it will pretty much in the click of like two buttons you'll have a perfect u-shaped graph that you will only have to minorly tweak don't leave them like these presets are okay they're just there to make it easier so you don't have to easy them go back easy keep going to all of them and then tweak 
them fully from easy ease so they're already pretty much done when you're pan cropping but i always minorly tweak mine just to make them flow and as you can see all my pan crop graphs they are never straight they're either this way or down okay on these they keep going the way the cinematic is moving emulate the camera movement with your pan crop you don't want it conflicting with the camera movement or else it doesn't really flow then alt drag this one out this one something like that rotation alt drag this drag this down down a little bit got smoothness these are our two sins with pan crop as you can see, it's already flowing so much better than when it wasn't with pan crop. Now onto the legs in. Let's go. Last in. SRP. Bring up timer map as well. Hitting shift U. Take these. Keyframe them on the first one. We're starting from the bottom left. Go left with rotation a little bit. Go to the left. Scale it out a tiny bit. Rotate it to the right. Try to keep these in the frame a little bit yeah and then next beat we're going there scale it up about right there and then we're gonna keep going straight this is we're gonna go into position separate dimensions we do pull this one down pull this one over and in this one we don't even have a keyframe in the middle and we don't need it click this one so you can zoom in while hitting control scroll wheel and then make a nice s curve while keeping the graph moving at the same time make some s curve on this beat and then make this around like this now we're on the scale same stuff put this up this to the left this is going in and then go here and we're gonna keep going like this alt drag this it's linear put it up and this one it's going in a lot so last one rotation alt drag make an s curve make this one up and now you have this and then that then it's gonna keep going in to the scale i think this scale is actually keeps going in too much so there we go so on this one we need to put exposition for a longer time up here so it will take longer to get there and ultimately having more frames leading up to where you focus on the subject All right, I'm vibing with that. So after you do all the pan crop or before you do the pan crop, I usually do it before, but I just wanted to show you guys how this looks every step of the way. This right here is everything I put on my cinematics. Motion tile for the motion tile, obviously. This is what's gonna make it look like there's no black space and you're still in the cinematic when you're transitioning. I'll put width length and then mirror edges, three, 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 three. I just click the same button three times, keep it 200 or 300 and then mirror edges. Moving on, we have levels. Many of you probably don't even know what to do with levels. This is what's going to white balance your clips and make all the colors fit nicely together how to white balance you go to red drag this drag this till there's no more space drag this a little bit drag this drag this and we don't need that so as you can see the colors right here look a tad bit off and it's a green conflicting so i'm gonna lessen this a tiny bit and now it looks fine that's all you do for white balancing and that drastically changes the color of your clip the simple rsmb 0.20 and 70 and then this is my sin shake i'm gonna have it in a preset pack in my next video hopefully it doesn't take me five months to make a next video but hopefully some of you guys are interested in that i'm gonna have some free presets in that video as well so make sure you guys check that out so then i just copy and paste these to the other sins and change the white balancing because every clip is going to be different reset it red this one's fine green need to move those in go to blue need to move this one in and this one in go to levels on the last one colors are off reset red that one's fine green hold this Pull this in blue hold this in it will contrast your clips a tiny bit but it will make all the colors fit well together now at the end of all of that we come back to the clips we need to transition the clips into the cinematic phrase and out of the cinematic phrase okay i have two beats in this shot i usually just go 10 frames back but in this case i have a beat here so i usually just go in the middle of the two beats so keyframe position scale and rotation and then since this in we're going from the left to the right we're going to zoom in positive rotation since we're going to the right then drag it to the right I have motion tile on this clip as well. Position, separate dimensions, shift, go like that and then pull that down make a shape kind of like this just keep doing that with all your attributes same thing with rotation and now we have this going in to the right coming from the left to our cinematic this flows almost perfectly so since we're just going straight in we are gonna keyframe scale and we go about 10 frames actually half between these beats i'm gonna keyframe scale at 100 around 50 i think 50 is fine since we're gonna have rsmb and motion blur on it then just make something like that and it'll go just like that into the clip So that's it. That's how we do cinematics and flow on Fortnite inside of After Effects. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys learned some. A lot of you guys have been asking for this. At least 100 likes for more videos. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Hopefully not five months from now.